It's time for Twig. I'm back. Jeff Jarvis is here. Stacy's here. The whole gang's all together, and for good reason. Google announced the largest slew of new products I've ever seen any company announce. And if you add the stuff from Nest last week, it's a Google Palooza. Everything Google talked about today, next on Twig. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twig. Bandwidth for This Week in Google is provided by Cashfly. C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Twig, This Week in Google, episode 425, recorded Wednesday, October 4th, 2017. Dogatonic. This Week in Google is literally brought to you by Sonic, Twit's 10 gigabit fiber internet service provider. Join Sonic's internet revolution as they bring fast, affordable internet, phone, and TV to homes and businesses all over California. Visit sonic.com slash twit to sign up for service and receive your first month free. And by 23andMe. With 23andMe's genetic service, you can learn what percentage of your DNA comes from places like Italy, Finland, East Asia, or Africa. Visit 23andMe.com slash twit. And by Captera. Find software solutions for your business needs. Captera is a free website with over 400 categories of business software and thousands of ratings and reviews from software users just like you. Visit Captera.com slash twig today. It's time for Twig this week in Google, the show where we cover ah, gosh, it's so hard to say. Just really anything we feel like it. Mostly having to do with the internet and computers and technology. Jeff Jarvis is here. He's the professor of journalism. Wow, he's almost blue. Now from I'm the... Trying to, I'm trying to do... <laughs> I, I, I. This was working better for a while. It doesn't now, matter. Suddenly... I don't care. It's um... fine. It's... Jeff is, for some reason, always confused cameras. Mm. I think he's like a vampire. He doesn't really exist. I am. I am. I, I also can't... Those sinks that require you to turn on, I can't do it. I can't do it. So. Professor of journalism at the City University of New York. He is uh, our esteemed colleague and expert in many things author of what but i'm actually do. dead I'm and a he talking is, corpse. He, is, he died in 1987 at right after his appearance uh with uh on that show what was that show moonlighting <laughs> 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 and no he's oh it's always welcome to have him and i'm thrilled to be back from france to say hello to jeff and to also the wonderful stacy higginbotham of IOT, Stacy on IOT. That's her newsletter and of her IOT podcast. Hello, Stacy. Hello. Hello. Hey, Stacy. So, this was a really big day. We had a massive, boy, very important it. announcement, a huge announcement from Sonos. Oh, boy, you're going to start with that. <laughs> oh, Actually, it's God, interesting because Sonos had to really think about uh, this because both Apple and it turns out Google are coming straight at them along with. Amazon, Sonos has promised for a year that they would put Alexa into a speaker. They did. They finally did. It's uh, the Echo-powered Sonos One, which has a lot of uh, interesting features. It knows where it is. It will. It's a smart speaker. Um, and they announced, which I'm very relieved to hear, that every Sonos uh, speaker will now be uh, Amazon a enabled because if you can connect a dot to the speaker, you'll be able to do things like play, you know, uh, Yanni in the bedroom and things like that. Um, so uh, this is a, they announced this a year ago, but they finally delivered and we're happy, right, Stace? I'm super happy. And you forgot like a huge deal. The biggest deal is the new Sonos One that will come out later this year is going to have both Amazon Echo and Google Assistant on it. Oh, I didn't so know get, that. They really highlighted yes. the Echo. Oh, so well, it's going to have so, Assistant too. Yeah, so there's a couple things. One, the first thing that we care about is if you have an existing Sonos, you will get All of Madam this. A on it today. Yes. So today I, or I whenever you get an yet. update, you'll get an update soon. I know. Where is my update? And then two, you'll get Apple AirPlay 2, Apple 2 AirPlay, Apple 2, whatever the order of operations there is. That'll come in 2018. And then the next big thing is they launched a speaker for $199 that's going to give you Hey Google and Madam A. Sorry, I just 
set off people's Google. Search. I like it though that I can connect my dot. I have a few dots lying around, as you know. <laughs> I can connect my dot to any of my Sonoses in my house. I have even more Sonoses, and that will uh, echo enable all my Sonoses. To add next year, it'll add Google Assistant. To do that, I presume I'll have to add one of these Google devices to it. Uh, no, you'll have to add a new Sonos. That's what they're saying. Oh, the you'll new, have to get the new, the the new, new Sonos One. Yeah. Ah. Your old stuff supports Madam A and Apple AirPlay 2. Ah, that's why I was confused. Your new one will get those two. Got it. Uh, all right. That's good news. Sonos One comes out October 24th. It's only $200. It's kind of like the Play One speaker. It's the, the simplest of their speakers. And really, it, clearly, it's, it's, its main purpose is to integrate into a larger Sonos system so that is uh, that is very good news and and they were smart to announce it early this morning <laughs> because Ooh. that at 9 a.m pacific google just dumped a ton of new products on the world and wow i i said at the time as we were covering the event florence ian and i were here in studio covering the event at the san francisco jazz center this is the largest product announcement i've seen from any company ever Certainly from Google. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight new products. And uh, arguably the, the new phone was not even the biggest of these products. But let's start. Let's do it in. Uh, we'll walk through these in order. They started with uh, the Google Home and the new Google Home Mini, which looks curiously like a donut. Especially, But it weighs less than a chipmunk. <laughs> Sorry. How do you know that it weighs less than a chipmunk? That was the ad they did. They really? Did the, it's smaller than a donut, or it's about the size of a donut, and it weighs Small, less, than a, less than a chipmunk. Especially the coral one. At some point, guaranteed, somebody's going to pick up the coral one and say, "Where? Hmm, donut." Uh, but this is uh, this is kind of like Amazon's dot, except that Google's decided to put an actual speaker in it. So the, the Dot has a tinny little speaker, but this, the uh, Amazon product, but this will have supposedly a better speaker. We, we don't know. Uh, we'll know. What do you lose in the Dot versus the, versus the regular home? Well, uh, it really comes, oh, it, with this instead of the bigger one? I mean, one, this, this, the, whatever, the Mini. The Mini, the lose? Home Mini versus the Home. I don't think anything except the size of the speaker. The speaker oh, in the, oh, in the okay. home, regular Home is pretty good. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine in something the size of a donut and the weight of a hamster that it will sound as good as the larger Home, but. Squirrel. No, no, chipmunk. 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 Hamster, Not hamster. Chip. There's a big difference. Uh, the uh, This will connect via Bluetooth, they said, to other speakers, though. So you could have it power a bigger stereo or a bigger uh, Bluetooth speaker if you wanted more. And, and I know, Stacy, this was of interest to you. It will work not only with the newly uh, elaborated Nest line. Nest announced a whole bunch of products last week. But will also work with Wemo, with Samsung's Smart Things. With Hue, TP Link's home. You like that new TP Link home, I think, didn't you? Uh, I, I have the I have the cool the the what are those called outlets that are right. rectangular. Yeah, I like those. It'll work with August door locks. It'll. <gasps> That's my thing. You like the Augusts, so you will be able to say, uh, "Hey, uh, G Lady, ask uh, August if my door is locked." I don't know if you'll be able to unlock the door. That'd be kind of cool uh, if you could say, hey, let somebody in. Apple, let, or Apple, August lets you do it on Amazon Echo if you enter a passcode. Ah, uh, that's smart, because otherwise a burglar might shout through the window. <laughs> hey, I can see, the let's door. see. <laughs> Siri, unlock, oh wait, Siri, talk to me. Siri, unlock back door. That's usually what I get with Siri. Here's what yeah, I found on the web. For unlock back door, <laughs> I hate her. Uh, the Nest yeah. thermostats okay. will work, but I presume it will. Nest now has what uh, a lot of security stuff in Nest. Uh, they th just announced last week. They announced their security stuff. They also put Google Assistant on their indoor fancy cam. Um, they call it the Nest Aware cam or yeah. Nest IQ cam. I have one over my shoulder here because Lisa wouldn't let it be inside. Lisa's a smart lady. She said no cameras inside, which is ironic because last week Amazon announced an alarm clock for my bedside table that unaccountably has a camera in it. Yeah, that was that mm -hmm. thing is weird. Mm -hmm. I put it on my desk. I ordered it. I have a home uh, show on my desk from Google. I mean uh, Amazon. But I, that's that, in my kitchen. That little what do they call it? The sp dot spot 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 
really begs to be put on your bedside table, doesn't it? Um, I think that's what they wanted us to do, but who's going to stick a camera on their bedside table? <sighs> it seems dangerous. I mean, uh, it's weird to me that I have a speaker or a microphone, sorry, a microphone on our bed, my bedside table. I have a dot. So. Uh, I have my dot on my bedside table because it's hooked up yeah, to speakers too. and it's really nice to ask for music. I love that. I think that's a great use. So uh, that's the new uh, Google Home Mini. It's kind of the best looking of the bunch, I think. I think it's very attractive. Again, even Google recognizes it looks a lot like a donut. Uh, and you do you order the colors or or yes. are those colors? So there's there's gray <laughs> they chalk signal for you? and coral. And uh, oh. you can also there are new bases. You see, here's a nice copper base for the Google Home. Ooh. Yeah, so they have a whole bunch of new bases for the Google Home. Google, well done, Google, by the way. They were able to get this up and running on their store right away. <clears throat> yeah. Many and of these I was things able can to order be, something. Yeah, I ordered a bunch of stuff with that. Remember the old days where we kept on hitting? Yeah. Again and again and again and again, yeah. and then we were, they were out? I, I, what, one of the things that really became clear to me during this event is that we are now, all three of the big players are doing ecosystem plays, Amazon, Apple, and uh, Google. Yeah, really good point. Be in our ecosystem really cool. and everything will work well, but no promises otherwise. Yep. Google seems to be pretty open in terms of the home automation stuff, but even then it'll probably all work better with Nest, right? What do you, what do you think, um, it doesn't Stacey? have to. So um, it's unclear if Google Home and all will have will will have Weave, which is the the device communications and discovery protocol that Google and Nest are both now doing. So if they have that, then things should work better. Um, but I don't know if they're going to have that yet. Yeah. Or I, I don't know how well that's or how that's going to work. Guys, yeah. guys. Uh-oh. It is very what? important. What's that? Google is doing pop-up stores with donuts. I love donuts. Ooh. Who is Who is making these donuts? That's actually, I have a very specific donut. Like love. Are you a voodoo so, donut person? No, because I cannot eat a five-pound pastry. That is ridiculous. <laughs> but I'm willing to try. Google's New York City like, pop-up shop is now open at 96 Spring Street. Oh, Austin's is going to be the 21st of October on Rainy. Run down there right now, Jeff Jarvis. Ooh, sorry, Just I can go. Do the show from here. You can here. get to Soho. How long did it take you to get down there? About uh, two and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> this is the verge. I'm 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 looking to see the donuts. The Made My Google pop up shop Monday through Sunday, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. And They're doing not only Manhattan but also Brooklyn. Oh, it's a very large place. Seems San unfair. Francisco, October fourth. Are, are and they really Krispy the Kreme donuts? Krispy Kreme donuts. Hot damn! I'm going. You had me at Krispy Kreme. Is that your brand? Uh, that is one of my brands, yes. <laughs> brand. That's what I'm looking for, a sugary, light, fluffy donut that I can eat half a dozen of. <laughs> oh, Shipley's is my brand don't for, you like, feel terrible more dense after, Austin after and it. Voodoo Donuts. It's yeah. different every city. Voodoo. Oh, dang it. I love Voodoo. October 21st and 22nd. It's San actually, Francisco yeah. and Johnny's Donuts. See, it's, to Manhattan me, this is and, all and Brooklyn academic. And donut I haven't plant. had a donut in years. Those things... They should have done Howdy Donuts for Austin. All Howdy that dieting donuts. you've been doing, Leo, it'll just go away. You have one I donut and it'll be gone. They, they call them sinkers for a reason. I got the schedule on the rundown. Nice. Thanks, Jeff. And I presume <laughs> that you can go in there and you could, this is actually a good idea. You could try this stuff because there are lots of questions. For instance, uh, Karsten Bondi, our producer, is wondering if those new Google headphones will do the translation thing, which is the coolest thing. We'll talk about that in a minute. With the old Pixel, or if you'll have to have a new Pixel for all the benefits of the Google earbuds. But I don't want to get... That's a lot of processing power. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's we what I think. But I, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. Here, by the way, are the bases I mentioned. If you have a Google Home, as we all do, you can get Coral. How much does it cost for those? Around 20 bucks and black. It's they just, not worth it. Yeah, you just pop it in there, and it will complement your home decor if you happen to be coral, brown, or black. Yeah, I think they think people are more attached to these things than they are. Google really was big on yeah. fabric. In fact, they even brought out their industrial designer to go on and on about the fabric. Like, how Yeah, do you, I was... 
I, I am actually, I hate the fabric. I really do. I do not like it. I do not like it, Sam. I am. It gets gritty <laughs> when I eat ham. No, um, I just, I don't like the look. I want that copper base, but I don't really want to spend more money on a device that I'm like, eh. Mm. Eh. 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 Um, I think this is Google saying, look, uh, this isn't Skynet. This isn't a scary robot. This is a friendly little donut-sized, durable weight, fabric covered, <laughs> covered listening device in your house. Uh, so why would you ever be afraid of that? Come on. It is unassuming. Unassuming. Perfect word. That's the that's the semiotics I was looking for. Well, he's in the yeah, fancy see? words today. <laughs> He is. My goodness. I should have taken uh, I don't think I, don't I know, used my that Adderall one correctly. or something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, uh, never mind that. <laughs> so moving right along, after they announced that, they talked about this. This is the Google Home Max premium audio to its assistant speaker, also fabric covered. Hard to tell from this image how big it is. It's not as big, not as monolithic as it looks. It's actually, if I, I had to look really hard. It has four speakers, two tweeters. They call them subwoofers, mid-range, really. Uh, and I had to look hard. That isn't that big. It's a little... What does... Um, it's the size of a loaf of bread. Cost? I would say it's the size of a loaf of bread. $3.99. That's expensive. This is insanity. But you know what it is? Okay. The fact... The, the coolest thing that it does is Google calls it neural beam forming, which is a fancy way of saying, hey, it knows where it is in the room and it adapts its sound. Smart sound. But... Yeah. Smart sound. This... This struck what struck me about this announcement was what the heck has Sony and JBL and all these other companies been doing for the last yeah. decade as like machine learning has become yeah. much more accessible to people. Well, even really? Sonos Google. came this close to losing everything. They, they without well, their announcement yeah. to this morning, even they would be out. And they're much more intelligent, well, much Sonos more internet connected their, than JBL or anybody else. They did their tuning. So remember probably yeah, two or three years ago. But that that if was you had much iPhone, like uh, Odyssey or the other uh, uh, stereo tuning systems where you put out a microphone and, and it does all these sounds and then it tunes it up. The Apple HomePod and this new Google Max uh, do it without doing it. I think we, you know, they're not out till the end of the year. I don't know what year. the HomePod does. Yeah, we're, we don't know it till the end of the year. But my sense is they just automatically kind of listen and, and sense it. Um, Leo, this thing is big. It is 13.2 inches by 7.4 inches by 6.0 inches, 11.7 pounds. It's heavy, That's which it should be. Speakers heavy, are usually heavy. Heavy because of transformers, the big magnets in the speaker. That's big. Uh, it's a loaf of bread. Maybe a little bit yeah, bigger, yeah, but yeah. it's roughly a loaf of bread. When you say big in speakers, that's <laughs> that's a well, big call, in this that's, kind of That's stuff. what we call a small bookshelf speaker. How big is a Sonos? This is this um, rough. It's bigger than that. The Play 5 no, is a little taller. The Play 5 is actually wider, too. And wider. The Play 5 is, I think, like 16, maybe? I'm just looking at a Play 5 right now, and I'm like, it's wider. It's not. It's it's wider than 13 inches. Really, sure. if you could get it smaller with big sound, that would be better. So uh, we'll, we'll just have to wait and hear what they sound like. They look fine. They look good. The good Sounds news. amazing on the ad. The, the thing <laughs> that I'm really happy about, they support not just YouTube music. Interesting, they didn't. They didn't men they mentioned YouTube music, they didn't mention Google Play, but it does support that. And Pandora and Spotify. And so that is all very good news. Google uh is not saying it's just us. Also iHeartRadio and TuneIn, so you can tune in, right. listen to us. TuneIn is uh is what allows uh Amazon Echo users to listen to all of our stuff. You just ask for whatever you want on TuneIn. Uh, I so it, says, radio it, it lists show, Netflix. Too, so. How how is it Netflix? That's uh because you can say play. Stra Notice Stranger Things had a big role at this event for some reason. You could say, play Stranger Things on my living room TV. That will require a oh, Chromecast. Okay. So that, but that's, didn't Chromecast just add functionality? Didn't they just add, you can do new things with the Chromecast? Yeah. Um, like Assistant? Yeah, but it doesn't have a, speak, a microphone. So you need, so in other words, this inner, but they've always, they <gasps> talked about this at Google I.O. Right. They talked about yeah. this at yeah. Google I.O. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now yeah, what yeah, they yeah, did right. show... Hold on. They did show something cool. I think that was today. They showed 
show my front door from like my Nest Cam, right. and that would pop up on your Chromecast or pop up in your TV from your yeah. Chromecast. They've prom but they so, promised that again on in June on the Google I/O. They promised that they did, but they now I guess they will do that. This is you know as this it forms as long as they do everything they promise, which isn't a guarantee. Uh, this is a nice ecosystem. If you're all in on mm -hmm. Google and you get Nest. Uh, and you get uh, assistance everywhere. You have a Pixel phone. You have a Chromecast enabled everything. Your house will be pretty responsive to you. I mean, and this so is now nice. Nest Nest has doorbell, ca indoor camera, outdoor or I mean outdoor camera, indoor uh, camera. Yes, and a security um, system which they security last system week. and thermostat. Yep. Right. And the uh, the smoke detectors. Right, smoke detectors too. Right, or the or. Uh, don't forget right. the smoke detectors. And the video doorbell. They're competing with Ring. They have something called the Nest right. Hello video doorbell. That's, well, that's coming, coming out next year. Next year. Yeah. But this is really, this is to get you into that whole, this is, this. Is, we're going to try to, they offered us a Rick Osterloh, who's a head of hardware at Google and we took the stage this morning. Uh, they uh, Google uh, sent me an email saying, we'd like to get Rick, Rich, Rick on one of your... Um, shows so we'll ooh, I, I, ooh, I, I, yes. I mentioned this show i mentioned the three different venues they he wanted to be on twit on the sunday show i said that's actually not a good place for him because we won't have a chance to really talk to him so yeah. i mentioned twig all about android our new tech news weekly which is a newsmaker interview show and the new screensavers and i'm just going to let uh, rick decide what he wants to do but we will get him no, on. you should tell him to come on this one I, it should be on this one because of you stacy because yes. <laughs> because of the uh, the internet of no because of the internet of things uh thing mm -hmm. but boy this is rick because it is her middle name after all he's, but it's tasty internet of things higginbotham that's actually yes. how i uh, i mentioned her uh this is an ecosystem and he's in charge of all hardware now right he's not just nest mm -hmm. he's i mean he isn't he includes right. nest right it's not just right. yes he came it's all he this was stuff at motorola today. when google acquired motorola he uh, ushered the moto x and i'm that's where i first met him nice guy smart guy and I think this is this is what he's been charged with. Make this all work across the ecosystem. I like it. Do you think, Stacy, I should just throw everything out, all the smart things, all the Amazons, all the Sonoses, and just line the home with Google? Um, I mean, yes, if you want to, follow Google's... me to the line. <laughs> you see the advantage, though, because it there'll be one assistant. I'll here. learn the syntax of that assistant. Everything will work. So I would say... It, you should probably go all in on Google Google Homes, Google Assistant. Um, so the Google Home devices, as opposed to the Echo, because it's confusing. Because their home ecosystem, yeah. it is confusing, and their home ecosystem is much better. Um, wow, that's a big deal. And well, but they don't have anything deal. like the Echo Show. I can't. They don't. Um, of course, my so, TV can. I I tried it yesterday. You know, I have an Nvidia Shield, which they just updated to version oh, yeah. six. It has Assistant, so I pressed my Shield remote. And I said, what's the weather going to be like this weekend? It turned on my stereo receiver, my AV receiver. It turned on the shield, turned on my stereo receiver, turned on my TV, and, and displayed the weather and said, it's going to be 78 degrees and sunny. How long did or that take? you could take? have opened the damn it window. A, <laughs> it took a long damn time. <laughs> but if like, your TV were wow. already on, if you were, I mean, yes, because it, it had to do a lot of, but it did <laughs> it. That's what's interesting, using CEC and, and all no, that. No, that is, so... I probably wouldn't go all in on the smart home devices with Nest, to be honest. I find them very expensive for what they are. I like my Ring stuff. See, this is the problem. I've invested a lot in Ring. I've invested well, so a Ring lot in Echo. Well, so Ring is going to come to Google. Right. Ring and Google, they already did announce, uh, will work together. So, okay. And then, you know. I am not, so I am not ever putting an automatic lock on my door. That seems like a recipe for disaster. Okay. Do you use well, August you locks on your front door? Um, my front doors are weird. They're multi-point locks. So I have an August lock on my back door and I have a... Don't you don't worry that somebody I'm... could hack your back door? You know what? Beforehand, if you wanted to kick my door in That's at the back door... Locks, totally are just a, locks are just a suggestion. They're just a, a, a an indicator that please don't come in here. Because really... And I had... A couple years ago when I had those hacker people come to my house and hack hack my house after I gave them my Wi-Fi password. They um they had locked and unlocked my back door and I was kind of like, eh, not so freaky. I yeah, don't know. Yeah, because you know you my make an excellent totally point. You it. break the window and open it or you kick the door in. 
locks have never really been fully secure it, unless you have a metal door and a I mean you'd have to really do a lot of structural stuff to keep it completely really Can you secure. see my dog? Look at her. She's can oh. you I I guess you can't see her. She's all on her back. Yes, okay. She's so, on the door. That's all. Oh, look, oh, you look, 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 left again. There's a sweetie. Is she alive? Yeah, yeah, that's what she does. <laughs> She just does that. Is she, she hoping that you'll go you over her. and uh, scratch her? No, she does. She gets it. She, that's just how she likes to lay. She's, it's more comfortable that way. I don't know. Hello, Is that comfy, sweetie? Are you she, sure she's she not does dead? Correct. Yeah, you sure I'm she's still with us? She blinked. <laughs> she's okay. catatonic. Okay, so what's sorry, her name? Sorry, Sophie? Dog joke. She's dogatonic. Sophie on her back. That's so. the name of the show. Um, all right, so the Max, the Mini, the Home. Now we get they didn't to something do anything new with the Home, did they? They're just the color of things. There's nothing. Yeah, there's no, not there's a new nothing home, new. The Mini is the Mini Home, and the Max is the Maximum Home. Good, but they're all home devices, which is interesting. That's really that is now a product line. I think it's that's a good yeah. way to think of it. They've got. I'm the almost mini, surprised they didn't they didn't include the, the Nest stuff here on the Google uh, Store page. Just go ahead and integrate it. Australo is in charge. The fact that they keep Nest separate is kind of silly to well, me. Can't you go to home? Let me see if I go to home and entertainment. Can't you get Nest? Yeah, you can get Nest stuff here. Not you do? Always. Okay. Thought, yeah. Oh, I see. So it's in the home and entertainment. And in fact, oh. on that page, this is the lineup. Google Mini, Google Home, Google Max, Google Wi-Fi, Chromecast Ultra, Chromecast, Chromecast Audio, Nest Thermostat, Nest Protect, Nest Cam IQ, Nest Cam Indoor, Nest Cam Outdoor. So it really is the full range. Does having Google Wi-Fi in any way help? I don't think so. In fact, I do not particularly like Google Wi-Fi. I think the, there are other better mesh systems. We use Plume and Eero. I think the Orbeez are better. I, I was surprised that Google said it was the number one selling mesh Wi-Fi system. I was too, and I didn't, I didn't really dig deeply into that. I Kevin and uh, Kevin and I were IMing back and forth, and I was like, "Really?" He's like, "It's available at retail stores, and it has the Google brand name." He has one, and he likes it. So, or he has it's a it's adequate. Things. There's nothing wrong with it. I like it. You use it? Oh yeah, yeah. I, well, I, I'm not. I, I'm not going to buy five of them and compare them. I don't. Yeah, that's what I did, and that's so, yeah, that's why course, I ended up with the and plume. But uh, I uh, I feel like it. I don't think there's any reason that you need it. They didn't make any case for that. It's just another mm -hmm. one of what product. Uh, but if there is, I'd love to hear about it. And we'll, we'll ask Rick that. That's one of the things we can ask Rick. So now we get to the thing that, uh, well, let's take a break. And then when we do, we're going to get to the thing that, oh. that Jeff is most interested in. Yes. Jeff. Oh, Jeff, you're a good color now. Oh, hey. I, I did some more adjustments. You got some color white in your balance. face. Nice. You got okay. a quick tan. Our I'm... Show I'm, I'm <laughs> I'm the president. <laughs> oh, you little a little spray orange? Yeah, a little spray. Yeah, that's wonders. good. That does is amazing. Jeff, you're warm and I'm cool, so it, it balances out. Well, it, it it's it's true too. You wouldn't think going to France you'd get a tan, but I think I did actually get a little color. Yeah, you did. Yeah. 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 Well, I was in Provence. That's it's sunny down there. We had we experienced the Mistral, the famous wind that drove Van Gogh crazy. And oh, I understand. No. I understand why. It went for three days. It's just constant, strong wind. It's extremely annoying. <laughs> but, then, <laughs> but then it's a stopped one day and everything was, the skies were blue and clear and it was beautiful the rest of the time. And it's, it was, so it was kind of, it was, I was actually really glad. We went, we walked in Vincent's footsteps, you know, went to his, where his little yellow house was. We had a drink in the um, night cafe that he painted, you know, with the oh. pool table mm -hmm. and stuff. We had a cup of coffee there. Our guide said, it's fine to have a drink there. Don't eat there <laughs> it's still there it's painted yellow still uh we went to the asylum where he ended his days and uh and and everywhere they in arl and uh and avignon that they do that they have his paintings positioned on a, a, a outside where they were painted so you could say oh yeah there's the mountain oh yeah it's really i was actually kind of moved it was really beautiful really was glad to be able to do that uh actually how did I get on that? I'm sorry. I apologize. That was a digression. Which my fault. It was my fault. It was something about you going in France and the color of your skin. Yeah, no, it was I'm my fault. Cheesy, you know? I brought we're, it up. We're, we're doing an ad. Sorry. I brought, it up. <laughs> I brought it up. My friends, our show today is brought to you quite literally by Sonic. We actually have the best internet connection in the world here. Well, at least 
I feel pretty good about it. 10 gigabit symmetric internet fiber from Sonic, the best internet provider in the country. I hate doing these ads because most of you can't get Sonic. But if you're in the North Bay or if you're in the San Francisco Bay Area, please do yourself a favor and get Sonic. Sonic's mission is to bring internet freedom to all with unlimited uncapped internet from a provider that stands up for you sonic delivers residential and business fiber to the premise networks gigabit connectivity let's look at what you get you get a gigabit down you get 15 email accounts a gigabyte of storage you get personal web hosting you get a new domain you get fax line service you get a home phone connection that's really a home landline phone with unlimited local and long distance calling it's easy to switch to port your number over from your current carrier so you won't even lose your phone number. And you get all of that for $40 a month. And what I love about it, and the reason I, I, I want to tell you about it, is because this is placing a, a, a drawing a line in the sand and saying you can do this. What those big c cable companies and phone companies are charging you is outrageous. You can get a gigabit for $40 a month. Sonic.com slash twitch. <laughs> And they have no bandwidth caps. If you go look at the EFF ISP rating card, f green checks across the board. They they stand up to government requests. They do everything right. They stand up for privacy. They have friendly and local customer support, uncapped bandwidth, affordable pricing, and they make a living. It's a profitable, successful company. And this just puts the lie to everything else. Those other guys are telling you, get the best. Go to sonic.com slash twit and join the internet revolution. Receive your first month of Sonic internet and phone service free, plus bundle it with Dish. Get the TV too, and you'll save $120 on your Sonic bill. Sonic.com slash twit. Thank you, Sonic, and thank you for gigabit. 10 gigabit. By the way, nothing in this building can use 10 gigabits. The best we can do is a gigabit. But I love it. I mean, all my devices are gigabit. And we use, it's not just me. We have all, the, everybody's uploading and the editors are working. And and no slowdowns at all. It's just marvelous. I just 40 bucks. How do they do that? I Well, I interviewed Dane Jasper, the founder and CEO. He's actually an old friend. I've known him for years. He has, his license plate says Linux. I love that. And uh, he said, <laughs> no, we make money. If we get one in five in the neighborhood, one in five of the people who live in the neighborhood to subscribe, we make money. I want it. I want to come to New Jersey. I know. Come well, I do think that Dane's uh, ambition is to slowly roll it out across the United States. He really has wanted that's, to do that. That's been his ambition yeah. for like seven years, though. Yeah, it's hard I'm to do. I'm still waiting. I, know. It's, I mean, it's hard, tough. So expensive. in addition to the capital costs, like a lot of – Dane has similar capital costs, but uh, – he doesn't have unionized workers. And if you look at the infrastructure behind Comcast or Verizon – his company is much smaller right. from that perspective. And then a lack of union workers helps and pensioned workers. So less so Comcast, but the older telcos, God, they they just still they I still have people on pensions. Really? My father in law is on a uh AT and T oh. pension. Oh yeah, yeah. Well actually that's that's the blight of a lot of old companies, including all our car companies. Is right. they well, have I this mean, that, huge number of people who uh, are pensioned. That is, that is a lot, them. but anyway. It's okay. a promise they made. They got to do it. I, I, and you see sometimes yeah. companies not, and I think that's really criminal. In fact, a lot of public public uh, groups, you know. Uh, well, they don't have the funds. They can't. I mean, Firefighters, yeah, you're, police, they can't. And uh, and then they stop. And it's. I think it's that's a, that's a breach of promise. It's sad. Anyway. We are not going to solve pension problems today. That is true. Let's well, talk I remember about when uh, when my friend uh, Drew Curtis was running for governor of Kentucky, the guy from FARC, he said, this is the crisis that uh, that is unacknowledged that Kentucky is going to face. They they have pension obligations they cannot meet this year without going bankrupt. And mm -hmm. this is the this is the problem. And, and none of the other candidates would even mention it. <gasps> Your family's home. Uh, it's here. It might be. Or Sophie. Yeah, no, she's barking at the door. Sophie said, yep, see, I hear Andrew. Yep, yep. There's my family is home. Family's home. Oh, good. I was saved from the boredom of being with mom. I was I was catatonic, dogatonic on the floor. 
I can't wait till you're home. Oh, thank goodness. Let me out of here. Why did they trap me in here? She's so cute. Because Jeff Jarvis made tail. it. Listen, yeah. Jeff is, Jeff is so mean. Tell me again what breed she is. She's a mutt. She's a mutt. She's really sweet. We, we rescued her. <laughs> She's exactly the size Lisa wants. Lisa wants to get another dog. And uh, she's this exact Would she like size. mine? Yeah, we'll take Sophie. She's sweet. You love Sophie. Yeah, Don't right, say right that. Size. Don't say that. She's also a beautiful color. She's, yes, she's nice. She's stubborn and she's loud. Like me. Oh, hey. <laughs> I told her we can get a dog if it's 10 years old. <laughs> I want an older dog. Uh, get the pet insurance this time. So Jeff was waiting. Jeff loves his I was Pixel, waiting. his Chromebook. I do indeed. I'm, 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 I'm my hands on my Pixel right now. I have two. I have three Pixels. It's super annuated. There's another great word. It's, Boy, you are just Dr. <laughs> vocabulary today. We're going to need a glossary for the show. <laughs> Superannuated is a fancy way of saying old. But it's a nice, I like the word, superannuated. It's a good word. I, I, yeah. Yours is, you You like me, you have, uh, no, you have the first generation? No, that's Jason I have Howell. first and second. I have, I have you, two you seconds have and a first. One. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, one of the reasons we all bought Chromebook Pixels is because it had i5 Intel processors. It had lots of RAM. Uh, but they weren't cheap, and they're not cheap this time. This is the new Chrome Pixelbook from Google. And I think Google might have overpriced this once again. $9.99 for the yeah. base unit. Uh, it is a convertible. That means you can use it as a laptop. You can fold over the screen and use it as a tablet. You can tent it. Uh, it they do now offer a pen, and we'll talk about that. That's a separate hundred dollar add on. Uh, it is a twelve point three inch screen, and it's the first laptop with Google Assistant built in. Even that, it's to the point that it has a Google Assistant button. Although when it's folded over, it will listen for you know the okay, you know who. Um, so you can so if you don't want to talk to it, you can press the button and type to it. I like seeing this because it feels like Google Assistant is now the future voice for Google, right? They're just going to mm -hmm. kind of make this be everywhere. It does support Android, and they mentioned, uh, I was glad to see that Adobe, who was it? Uh, no, Snapchat was going to make a special uh, Adobe, I keep saying Adobe, Android Play Store version of Snapchat for the Pixel that would use the full screen. 10.3 millimeter thick, very, very thin, all aluminum unibody. 2.4 pounds. Yep, just a kilogram. Uh, so this is this is pretty sweet until you get to the price. $9.99 gets you a i5 with 8 gigs of RAM and a 128 gig hard drive. $200 more, you get uh, double the size of the hard drive. That's all. I'm kind of regretting paying that now because I don't, who needs a big hard drive in a Chromebook? If you're going to use no. it to, I, I know, same here. If you're going to use it to, uh, I I use Google Play to watch all my shows. Most so you of my shows. download them? And I use Netflix and I use Amazon. And so I download a lot onto my Pixel okay. C. But even Will then, 128 this? gigs, 128 gigs would probably be enough. I would guess. That's a that's a lot. I mean, you'd have to be kind of diligent yeah, about clicking things off, but Yeah. Then if you really think, oh, you know, a thousand bucks isn't enough, I want to spend seventeen hundred dollars. You could put an I seven in here, sixteen gigs of RAM. I wish the middle one had sixteen gigs of RAM. For Same me. here. That's the one thing that well, there's two things yeah. that piss me off. That pisses me off. I want sixteen gigs. And a five Is twelve gigabyte, but you can't get that right now. Remember the old days when you could actually just add memory? Isn't that nice? Yeah, mm -hmm. I do. Even I'm, I'm old enough to. But those were not remember. those were not ten millimeter thick machines. <laughs> no, they were not. So, were not. just looking at the pictures, Type C connectors as before on the left and the right. That's handy because you can charge it on mm -hmm. either side. It has a. Uh, Stay on that picture for a second. On off button here. Looks. What is this button? A volume maybe. No, oh, it's. And then a here. headphone jack. I don't know. This is a longer button here. So on that picture, Leo. Yeah, that's what fooled the. Um, yeah, what is this thing? The rumors. That's just a shadow. I know. It made and me the nuts. thought was that the keyboard was going to slide underneath. Pixel C. One thing style. I don't like about this is in in tablet mode, 
I know I'm going to knock keys off. I did that originally with one of the uh, yeah. another machine I had, and and the, the flip around 180, I don't like much. I, I have like the a uh, Lenovo convertible. This is that's this 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 technology. Despite what Google calls it, they call it a four in one. Isn't called four in one in general. It's called convertible. And I have a convertible Lenovo uh, X1 Yoga, and it retracts the keys as you flip it over. Yeah. So, yeah, so see, that's what I want. That, but the negative on that is it means that the the hinge is a little creaky because you have to do more with it. It's physically retracting the keys. Or the Microsoft model, or I mean, there's lots of different models, but the, my, my least favorite yeah. is that. I, um, I just, so I don't know that I'll use it. Sell this in Best Buy. I think somebody goes into Best Buy. They look at this. They go, "That's really nice. How much?" Nine ninety nine. Well, wait a minute. That Asus is four ninety nine. It's the same, right? Yeah. yeah, pretty much. Same thing with the Chrome. The Chrome they sold the Pixel in Best Buy for a month, and yeah. obviously nobody's going to buy. They this. had staff there. The only people are going to buy this is you and me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I already pretty did. Much. Uh, <laughs> pretty much. Now, uh, now I'm getting buyer's remorse that I should have gotten the uh, one twenty eight. <sighs> me too. When you know, if if only they'd put sixteen. That would make it so in much the middle more worth one. It. That would be the right. Then that would be the sweet spot. Yep. The pen uh, is not unlike the Samsung Chromebook Plus or Pro, where the pen is thinner and smaller and embedded. You know, has a little slot. The pen is just a standalone pen. The it pen is even, losable. It isn't even like the Microsoft Pen, which has a magnet. I don't think has a magnet on the side, so you, you don't lose it. It's just a. It's like you're going to put it in your pocket pen, uh, but. The good news about the pen is it is a Wacom style. It is from Wacom. They the screen and the pen. Wacom or Wacom? I've never known. Mm, they said Wacom. Oh, okay. I think it's Wacom. <gasps> but they said Wacom. What, Stacy? Stacy yawning? No, no, no. She. No, my Sonos is updating. Bye. Oh, oh. Ooh, oh, back from Sonos, you too. So oh, jealous. Jesus. So jealous. I'm gonna go home. <laughs> I want to go home right now. I've been checking throughout the show. I'm like, come on. <laughs> I go home right now. You don't have Sonos? I'm sorry. No. I surprised Jeff. I thought you would. No. All the smart kids do. Because it was so, when it, when it came out, it was so damned expensive. Yeah. It is. It is. It's ridiculous. And then one way, that's why I'm thrilled that Sonos finally just did something right. Because uh, it was starting to look like I was going to have to sell my Sonos stuff and buy all Apple Home Pods or uh, now that they... Home Max from Google, maybe all of those. Solid state NVMe drive means a very fast drive. Uh, having a seventh generation Intel processor, even in the i i5 is plenty. I, uh, that's really fast. Lots of RAM. Okay, that's good. This will be the best Chromebook, but you mm -hmm. will pay the premium price for this thing. The pen has yeah, two, I mean, two thousand levels of uh, pressure. It's very. It's a. This is just what you want, frankly. Um, and they say 10 hours of battery use. I, I The Pixel had excellent battery life. Yeah. So I'm going to count on that. I still, so what I, what I don't know is going to happen. So I, I I just need to have the best Chromebook because that's what I live on. Right. Um, what I don't know is whether I'm going to travel with it. Um, number one, because oh, I still, so I, I, I like my, yes, I don't know, but it's bigger. I like my Pixel, but I, you know, if I'm on the subway and I want to turn over and watch something, yeah. That versus the Pixel C, I think the Pixel C is better or plain even. Uh, I don't want to ruin the the keys, so I don't know what I'm going to do. I'll be whining about this for a few weeks after we. Here's get it. the pen. Uh, it's the only pen that works with the Google Assistant. They demoed that. I thought that was cool. You circle a word, it'll give you the definition. The assistant goes, "Oh, you want to know what that is? It'll give you the definition." You circle a face, it will look that person up with Google Image Search, which is very cool. Pressure sensitive, tilt support. They say virtually no lag. That's always an issue with artists. Uh, both Apple, Apple especially on the iPad Pro and with their pencil and uh, Microsoft with its Surface Pencil, they've done a very good job of making it almost very close to really drawing. And that's really what artists want. When you draw, it feels like that's ink coming out of the pen. We'll see if Google can do that. That's one of the reasons, though, that you want to put a fast processor and lots of RAM in there. Uh, it says edge to edge um, trackpad. What does that mean? Um, they say they're doing a better trackpad. We'll see. I don't know because trackpad's not traditionally very good on Chromebooks. By the way, the pen the pen uses a replaceable 
quadruple A battery. Not it's not rechargeable. Just a quadruple oh. A battery. Yeah, they have they were like triple A's only smaller. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, yeah, that makes it's sense. It's a common. It's <laughs> a, 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 a. I don't know how do you, how do you say it? Four A's A A A A battery. Yes, I I don't is know this how common? I would say it. I've never uh, I've never yeah, it's not common, these. but it's available. Yeah, widely available. Is it common for a laptop to have a gyroscope and a magnetometer? No, not to my knowledge. Why would they have that? Because of Android apps. The Android apps expect the features oh. of an Android phone. Okay. Yes. And one of them, of course, the gyroscope is so you know the, the position okay. of it. The magnetometer, well, that's a compass, right? Yes. So it would be for nav, I guess. It doesn't have a GPS, though. It also doesn't have LTE, which disappoints me regularly. Well, it does have automatic. But they did the right thing, if you have, but you have to have a Pixel. Uh, if you are using a Pixel, it senses it, it knows it, and will automatically turn, put the Pixel in hotspot mode and connect through the And you pixel. have to have a Pixel that's not on an AT&T grandfathered account that won't let you tether. I said whining. I'm whining. I know. Yeah, you should be on Google Fi. Yeah. Uh... Oh, all Windows Ultrabooks have gyros for rotation. That's where you have the, that's what you have the gyros. Oh, right. For. Okay, right. So right, when you, right. Thank you. Yeah. So when you when you that makes sense. So when you rotate it, it knows which way's up. Um, that makes sense. I don't know what the magnetometer is for. I would guess it's a compass. Oh, here. Oh, don't don't guess. We'll Google. Why guess? <laughs> don't guess. We'll that's Google. a big word, Leo. You should just know it. Well, I know what Magnetometer. it is. Magnetometer. <laughs> Uh, instrument that measures magnetism. So Thank a you. It's a compass. Compass. Uh, yes. What does it do? No, that's the question. Is what more does? Why would you have? I, uh, they're used in the military to detect submarines. Probably uh -oh. not. On well, now your... you can detect submarines with your Chromebook Pixel <laughs> or your Pixel All right. Chrome. Or it uses. Okay, here we go. It creates a miniature Hall effect sensor that detects the Earth's magnetic field along three perpendicular axes, and it produces. La, la, la. AKA a compass. Right. I know. I know. Hold on. <laughs> well, a compass on. only needs one axis. Um, it's crucial for det detecting the orientation of your device relative to the Earth's magnetic north. So the gyro and the magnetic work together. It's I about guess, orientation for tilt. somehow. Yeah. Uh, device prosipid. I think this will be a beautiful. This is why Google does the Pixel in general, the Pixel books. Yes. Is, to show what can be done with uh, Chrome OS. Well, they finally have that mid-range machine that we wanted in the five hundred dollar uh, Samsung convertible. I like the Samsung. Uh, I I bought a couple of those. So can, we, can wanted, we, we wanted that. How, yeah. Say can again? we talk about how I feel it is misleading of Google to keep? They called it a laptop so many times during this thing, and it is not a laptop. It is I'm a not. Chrome. But it is well, not accidental it, to call it a laptop. They're really trying to emphasize that a Chromebook. Is a is, laptop. Yeah. I can't. No, but it's not. I can't do things like run my Audacity program. Stacy, Stacy, it can do 99% of what you need. Okay. I spend like 10 hours a Audacity, week on Audacity. Programming? No. Programming, try no, try Ophonic. You can't do. So try the Android app Ophonic uh, okay. and, and see. I mean, there are Android and Chrome extensions that will allow you to do some of the things. I agree with you. I mean, I'm a, I, the main reason I still use an a all-purpose all laptop is because I uh, want to do photos, right? Photo editing. Yeah, well, and there's the Polar pricing, and there's stuff, but it's not quite... The, it's priced like a it's laptop. Not quite there. I agree with that. And, but that's but my big point. That's exactly my point. You go in the store and you're going to see even Windows laptops are 500 bucks. You're going to see all these things in the five to eight hundred dollar range, and then nine ninety nine, and all it is is Chrome OS. I think it's going to confuse people, but if you are all in, if you get Chromebooks, you'll love it. But the the real market for Chromebooks is schools and businesses that don't want to spend a lot of money. They want something simple to manage. They don't want any viruses. That isn't somebody who's going to spend a thousand bucks or more on a laptop or a Chromebook. I don't think. Right. I'm 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 so with you. I look at this thing and I'm like. Some people might even buy it and be pissed when they figure out the limitations because that's the only risk. I don't, I don't think, think Google cares if they sell a lot. They know they're not going to sell a lot. Stacy, I also know people who just say, thank goodness, all the hassle is gone. Yeah. New OS is installing crap, all this stuff. Depends on how you're using a machine. Right. Most people are doing primarily podcasts for and editing audio. 
Most most no, people are I doing mean, Microsoft uh, Office stuff, right? So this is this is the equivalent of I'll that. I'll give you an example. When I get up and I have breakfast, and uh, there's uh, I I open up a laptop, but all I ever really do is I as I do my news beat checks, I surf all the news sites, answer email, uh, you know, see what's been going on. Maybe uh, maybe look at a YouTube video. That is all possible on a Chromebook. A Chromebook is my breakfast yeah. laptop. It is not my work laptop where I have to get something done. It's not my photo editing laptop. But it's but for most people, if they're not doing you know podcasts or editing photos, but it's, why it's, would they spend that kind of money? You could buy a an lot. iPad. Because, because I mean, Stacy, I uh, this the speed matters, um, um, especially before there was a five hundred dollar Chromebook. If you had a two hundred three hundred dollar Chromebook. It, it was not capable of having tons of, of tabs open. It wouldn't work well. Uh, and, and But this machine it works incredibly well. This is, this I've is been on Pixels since they started. I've, I've, exactly so it's been two and a half years, three years. This is exactly the conversation I had with Sundar Pichai when the first CR48 Black Chromebook came out. Yep. I said, Sundar, I don't understand why anybody would buy this when you could get a computer, a full computer for the same price. Snobs. This is also, Stacey, I'd argue this. For people who... For the post-computer world, where all you have is a phone, this makes a lot of sense. Okay, the post-computer world better not rely solely on me looking at my phone. The post-computer world we're finally getting to, and it's going to be things like my computers. You see, actually, Google did such a great job showing this off. It's things like show me this, and it pops up on a screen yes. that's useful, or circle yes. something with my pen on my exorbitantly yes. expensive, not laptop, <laughs> and tell me the information I need. So I see what you're saying. I feel like the marketing around it is not good. The marketing, calling it a laptop when it's not a laptop and then pricing a Chromebook mm -hmm. so high just feels. Snob. And a lot snob. of. Snob. It's a laptop. I'm not a snob. <laughs> I just, I have programs I need to run, man. And I think about like my daughter who does video editing for fun and giggles because she's a tween girl. And, She's going to have Snapchat on her new Chromebook. Oh, Lord. Oh, oh Lord. And by the way, you get Snaps. It, once you get Android, you get Photoshop. Uh, I mean, Lightroom Mobile. You get Snapseed. You get plenty of great tools in Android. Mm -hmm. And if it, if companies like Adobe and Snap, and Snap decide, you know, see that this is a this is a form factor that we're going to want to support... They'll, they'll make their software automatically fill the screen. They'll use it. And that's exactly what Google said on the stage. Snap is going to make Snapchat for the Pixel Book. That's what's, what's going to cost them. Are about planet? fragmentation? No, this is well, stuff like that. I this mean, this is inherently part of <laughs> fragmentation. Are you, with Android? No, there's no fragmentation. Well, <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, I'm like, my God, now you're going to have to have two different apps. Well, one for the phone form to. factor, one for the... They already have Well, to. yes, that, that is an issue, Stacey. And, and, and where it's most awkward now is when I'm... Let's say I'm on the Washington Post and I want to tweet an article there and I hit the Twitter, it opens up and I want it to just go to the web Twitter situation. Oh, but it, it asks opens to up go to the, the Android. Yeah. It happens up the Android Twitter app and it doesn't work yeah. well. Yeah, so I have to close I that. that um, uh, and I still can't find where I take off those... Um, defaults of going to the Android app instead of to the web, which is what I want. Uh, I, I live in fear of clicking always and never being able to go back on things that I care about. That's, I live that's in fear of clicking. <laughs> <laughs> it's my web story right there. <laughs> I'm with you, though. I agree. I hate how it defaults yeah. to, why aren't you using the app? I'm like, shut up. If I wanted to use the app. Yeah, exactly. The exactly. App. And, it, and, and it pushes that too much. So that's still very awkward. Uh, that's not, not great. And so the so it's not ready for saying, oh, but all the Android's on there. It doesn't work perfectly yet. Um, and I don't know that it ever will. We'll see. Look at Google highlights for uh, apps when uh, on their page here. This is on the store page for the they show all the Android apps in productivity. For creativity, AutoCAD, Infinite Painter, Jamboard, Lightroom, Sketchbook. It's interesting they don't mention Snapseed. For entertainment, Google Play Music, Instagram, Netflix, YouTube. It's no accident they, they did, made a big deal with about Netflix because that brings movies to your Chromebook. And works with Pixelbook Pen. Only two programs so far, Sketchbook and Squid. 
But the two is enough. I mean, it's, you know, it'd be nice to have more. Certainly the iPad I want, has many. I want some note-taking. Those aren't note-taking ones. I want I want. They, they talked about that as a use case, so I imagine there will be. I, I would. Yeah. I am, you know what? Both uh, Jeff and I will be using these, uh, Stacy, and mm -hmm. we'll, let, we'll get back to you. I agree. Thank I think you. the price is on the on the biggest negative. The price, but it's the same. Yeah. For the, it was exactly the same for the for the for the last Chromebook. It's no different. Pixel. Yep. And I don't think they yeah. sold a lot of Chromebook Pixels, to be honest. No, they didn't, and I don't think they but care. But the people about who that. have them love them and are devoted to them, and Stacey's are much absolutely relieved. right. This, in, in, re, in Best Buy, this ain't gonna sell at all. Yeah. All right, let's take a break. Come back. We'll talk about the phones, and. Kind of a surprise. Most of this, the, the the rumor mill was very right on about, but they missed two, not sort of missed. They mentioned that they thought there would be some earbuds, but they missed some of the critical features on the new earbuds, and uh, they did completely miss the camera, because why did they? Why would Google make a standalone camera? <laughs> oh, I have a great, I have a reason for that. So Good. you're gonna love it. I can't Stay wait. Stay tuned. Stay tuned, because that's coming up. On uh, This Week in Google with Stacey Higginbotham from StaceyOnIoT.com, Jeff Jarvis from BuzzMachine.com. Our show today brought to you by 23andMe. Love these guys. I did 23andMe way back when, when they first started. Started by Susan, uh, not Susan Wojcicki, Esther Wojcicki. One of the Wojcicki's. No, uh, so by... Um, Anne, Anne Wojcicki. Anne Wojcicki. So Esther's the mom. Yes, and her relationship with Google was she rented a garage to Sergey and Larry in the early days of Google, and Ann Wojcicki was married to Larry Page, and uh, Ann fell in love with Larry. They got married. The other daughter, Susan, runs YouTube, so YouTube. this is part all in the family. But Ann started this twenty three and Me, and I love it. Well, my I, whole family is doing it now. Brilliant family. It's spread. I couldn't get it when it first came out, and I got it. They said that I was a little nutty. Now they are fascinated with the data. Well, and that's what's cool about it. into a tube. Once, once you do it, yeah. So that's important to mention. Some people might say, well, I don't know. What do I have to do? Go to a lab? Do I have to give blood? Easy. No. It couldn't be easier. They do this all from your saliva. Uh, you spit in. The only hard thing is you have to get enough spit. <laughs> it's a lot of spit. <laughs> it's not that much. My, but father, my father did it, and he didn't do enough spit the first time. So they sent him a free kit to do oh, the spit that's again. that's cute. Yeah, you really have yeah. to kind of work work up the uh, saliva because that's but there's the I guess I guess your DNA is in there, right? So yeah, yeah. once you do this in a couple of weeks, they'll uh, say, "Okay, your stuff is up." And what I love about this, I did this years ago, but I have all of the benefits because as they've learned more over time, they add more and more to my reports. So I now have a hundred plus archived reports. I have wellness reports, traits. Ancestry, DNA, relatives. That's really fun. That is a really fun one. They found a second cousin on my grandma's side that I never knew about. I oh. I just love this. You could find out the you know here's some of my relatives, right? And it's based on the they're, now they're doing it and you're doing it. You have to give permission, okay? So uh, don't worry about somebody finding you that you don't want to uh, find you. But they, but but if if everybody gives permission, then you're you can it'll it'll pinpoint some relatives, which is which is really key, key. Also, if your relatives or family does it, like Jeff's, you can compare yourself to those people. Maybe you'll find out that your uh, mom isn't your mom. Who knows? So <laughs> they do. Actually, I shouldn't use that as an example, but <laughs> you, you know, you know what I'm saying here. You can find out stuff. I love uh, the ancestry reports. I am four percent Neanderthal. That's a good example of something that they didn't know about until recently, about uh, five years ago. They, for the first time ever, were able to analyze Neanderthal DNA. They found some old bones. And for a long time, there was a debate among scientists whether we are intermingled with Neanderthals or whether Homo sapiens could not interbreed and just killed them off. We now know, thanks to those bones a few years ago, that they did intermingle, and we knew what the traits are. And so this was a report that when I first did 23andMe, they couldn't have given me, but they did now. I am in seventh place out of my family and friends. A lot, of, a lot of my family and friends have more Neanderthal than I do, but I have 4%, a little less than 4%, uh, of my, uh, my genetic material comes from Neanderthals. Isn't that fascinating? You can find out what part of the country 
your uh, your people came from, kind of the world your people came from, and when. You can follow your maternal or paternal haplogroup as they migrate. So 180,000 years ago, my maternal haplogroup, L, was down here in, uh, in kind of central eastern Africa, migrated north across into the Middle East and from there into Europe. Isn't that cool? Over, I mean, this is just amazing. This is the kind of stuff. Now, you do this with your family and your kids. Think about what they're going to learn. I'm related to the Cheddar Man. <laughs> they're going to learn about, they, they, first of all, everybody's fascinated by stuff, right? They're, they're all by themselves, right? So they, they're going to get naturally engaged in this, but they're going to learn so much about genetics and DNA, the thing that's going to really change our world. You can even get access to the raw data. So this is, I can actually search for specific markers and chromosomes. 23 and me. This is very reasonable considering what you get. Go to 23andme.com slash twit right now. And can I suggest this as a gift for family members? This would be... It really works. Oh, it works. It's it. My daughter was so delighted that she's only 49.9% me. She's ah. majority of her mother's <laughs> DNA. It's made her very that's happy. Exactly, well, that's the kind of thing that's really cool, isn't it? Like, how my kids always are asking, how much of me is you and how much of me is mom? And yeah. it, you can now find... Well, let's find out. 23andme.com slash twit. Discover where you come from, who your people are. So much fun. Really love doing this. All right, let's get to the phones. Unfortunately. Ah. Are you going to take calls? That's a good idea. Let's go to the show. phones. Joe in New Jersey, you're on. <laughs> uh, it's fun. You know, I do that on the radio show. I love taking I know you calls. Do. I wish we could take calls. When we first started with some of these shows, we tried different platforms like um, oh, Talk wait. Shoe. Kevin, Kevin built one for us on the IoT podcast, and he posted a how-to on... The website. Do you so take live we calls use, during the show? No, what we do is you send it to us, we record it, ah, and then, or you, you a leave Twilio. a message. You did a Twilio. Yeah, thing. it's a Twilio with yeah. a, a Raspberry Pi. So what, it's awesome. What we used to with do. With a double twist. No, that's fun. But what we used to do is actually take live calls. Oh. That's an interesting, someday I might. It would be fun. If I, it would be fun I, to try again. You know what, yeah. maybe we should, we could like make once every, once a quarter or once a month do a live call in. I think that'd be fun. I know our, I know you guys would love it. Our audience would love it. So, Pixel 2. Everything we thought was going to happen did. No headphone jack. Sigh. Ooh. No wireless charging. Sigh. Sigh. Somewhat waterproof. It's IP67. That's really water resistant. Sigh. However... The things that people really love Pixel phones for are here. For instance, it's the most secure Android phone because Google keeps it up to date. That's great. It's really got great integrated support for Google Assistant. Uh, it's a simple, clean design. I'm really glad the XL, the large version, is almost bezel-less, but not fully. And the reason it's not fully is they have front-facing speakers, top and bottom, stereo speakers. Thank you. Really like that. One lens. No. Go ahead. Yes, Stacy. No, I was going to say, I was like, somebody I just talked to doesn't use a, like a Sonos or anything. They use their smartphone speaker. Right. And I realized it was Matt Cutts from last week. Right. But you have to have but a good he's... smartphone speaker. And this this is the way to do it. This, 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 is, this is the phone for Matt. <laughs> this is the HTC DNA. This is the boom sound DNA. Uh, HTC started this with the M1. And that really was, uh, sounded great. I really liked the front-facing speakers. Nobody else does this. In fact, you know, Apple has one cheesy speaker. Samsung has one cheesy speaker off the side. And it's really nice to have front-facing stereo speakers, especially if you ever watch video, which I don't. But it sounds better. I don't, you know, we'll see if it sounds as good as a regular speaker. Probably doesn't. We, uh, you know, all the flagship phones these days have dual lenses. Apple started it with, actually, I think LG started it, but Apple was the first really well-known flagship to have a wide and a telephoto. And they can do a lot of things, portrait mode and so forth. But Google was at great pains to say, we don't need two lenses. We need one lens and lots of computational power. And they can do portrait mode. They don't use both, they don't need both lenses. What they do with this uh, camera is they take a lot of images 
and they change, I guess, the focal length and the and the um, lighting, and then they optimize by mixing images, and that makes sense. You're doing this so fast. Why do you have to have two lenses? You could do it all with one lens. One lens optically image stabilized f 1.8, so it's fairly fast. Not the fastest out there, but fairly fast. And DxO Mark Google was very happy to say gave it a 98, the highest score they've ever given. Take I, that, Apple I, fan. Yeah, it's people. funny because didn't the didn't the Apple get like a 95? 94. Yesterday, 94. The okay. iPhone 8 and the Note 8 both were touting that they got 94. They tied. <laughs> and I feel like this was a setup because the next day Google says, oh, yeah, well, we got a 98. But it's, you know. Is this, is this, is this, this is, is there, is there a 101 or is it stop at 100? I think it must go past 100. Oh, I, think so, yeah. I mean, we're so close to 100. I don't know. Does that mean it's perfect? No, there must be a way to go. Wait, what is it the scale? Be. But we don't know. Uh, uh, no, sorry, not what is the scale. Just what is it? What is this measuring? It's Who DX, does this? DxO Mark. They are an uh, independent third party. They've done this for years. They're, they make software. So they, they have a business uh, selling software. But they've been for a long time reviewing not just camera phones, but all sensors and all cameras. The Pixel is the highest mobile, but it's got a score as high as the Sony a7R II, which is you know easily one of the best... DSLRs out there. It's not an SLR. It's a mirrorless. So I don't know if the I don't know if those are comparable. I don't know what the scale is. Uh, they do lens ratings as well on a different scale. And I would say they're reliable. They're trustworthy. But I wouldn't say it's that meaningful. I mean, look at the Google Pixel. Last year's Pixel was ninety. The iPhone Seven Plus was eighty-eight. The iPhone Eight is Plus is ninety-four. And now the Google Pixel 2 is 98. How much better is that? Maybe a little bit a scooch better, scotch better. I don't know. I think the smidge. Smidge. The truth is, if you're getting a flagship phone these days, even like an LG V30, you're getting a really excellent camera. And some are some do, like they say, the Note 8 is the best smartphone if you want to zoom. Um, it's funny because the iPhone 8 Plus, when it was reviewed, said the best smartphone camera we've ever tested. But that was all the way back in September. So, so what do you? So, so, so I have my Pixel XL. Love my Pixel XL. Oh, you should definitely upgrade. Real okay. So tell me why. Uh, you always cost me money, Leo. <laughs> uh, I think the the biggest thing is that the, when the Pixel came out, it was a rush job. We everybody agreed that Google had to kind of make some compromises to get it out the door. This is my Pixel XL, and I love this. Right, it's a great phone. Mm -hmm. But look yeah. at the look at the size of the screen related relative to the size of the. There's a big big bumps at the top and the bottom. Those will disappear on the XL uh, two. Uh, this uh, glass window is now smaller. The fingerprint reader is below the glass window window, and this is a soft touch. I think you'll like it better than the metal finish. Even though you're gonna put a case on it, but yeah, right. Eight thirty five Snapdragon eight thirty five processor. That is a better processor than that. I think you have an eight twenty. We have an eight twenty one in our Pixel XL. Um, camera, I think, is going to be the biggest difference. I think there is going to be a noticeable difference in the camera. Boy, I'm glad I didn't buy so, last so. year's smartphones. <laughs> well, truthfully, the real, the tough one is year to, buying one every year. If it's a two year yeah. difference, yeah, it's it's like a no brainer. But well, but here's the here's here this is, this actually helps. I can trade in my Pixel XL right and get four hundred ten dollars. That's a great deal. That's a real do that. That's a that means that this is now, uh, a, what is a four hundred fifty dollar phone, four hundred forty dollar yeah, phone. That makes it that makes it a lot better. That's fantastic. Um, so if you look at the I trade could in not stuff, trade in. I no. should have been able to get one hundred and fifteen for my Nexus five XP or five X, <laughs> except it broke because Aww. it was part of that whole flawed LG thing. Grr. Grr. So a six so, P, one twenty eight. It's you one hundred sixty five dollars. Not so great. No, that's to the two. A year pixel, old. a pixel, one twenty eight gets you three sixty. Oh, it's oh, it's an estimated. Oh, they ask you, does it turn on? Yes. Yeah, it's you know. Mm -hmm. Does it have any cracks? Yeah. No. Oh, mine's flaw. Mine's perfect shape. Next, can I reset it? Yes. Estimated value. Two thirty. 
for the um, small pixel, but for the XL. Anyway, if you can get the trade in, I think that means a big difference. Better graphics process. Yeah, it does. And I really think the camera is is going to be noticeably better. Uh, what else? What else is different? Um, oh, you can squeeze it. Oh. Come oh, yeah, on, that's big. Now I'm so what very happens with the skeptical. Case? No, yeah, what happens with the case? Well, no, the case. So the case. If you buy the case from Google, they've designed it to accommodate the squeeze. And they say they could distinguish a, a, an accidental <laughs> squeeze from a, an intentional squeeze. And the squeeze launches Google Assistant. So I kind of think that's a smart. Or way no, to I do thought it. it could do other things too. I thought it could. You could. You could. Well, she the demo. The demo, she, the demo she gave was she squeezed it, and then says, "Take a selfie." And it immediately goes to the camera and literally two seconds later goes three, two, and takes a selfie. That's pretty, that's a good application that's right not there. That's bad, yeah. Or what's the weather going to be? Or what time is it? Or set an appointment for tomorrow at 4.30 to get a haircut. Those are, that will be fairly useful, I think. I, you know, I'm skeptical again because that seems like a weird gesture. We've, we've talked about this on and on. If, it, if it's an intuitive, simple gesture that kind of comes naturally, that could be a big breakthrough. We need a good way to launch an assistant that doesn't involve turning on the phone and, or saying things or, or whatever. I, I think the squeeze has the potential of being very good. I'm excited. I can't wait. Talk to me at the end of October. Yes. We, so we the, old, yeah, the old assistant, I just tried to do it with my old assistant, and it won't. the existing phone won't do it. Take selfie. a selfie? Oh, I thought it did. Yeah, no. Really? So it's not doing it for me. I don't know why. Why is mine red? And my, I mean, while my Google Home <gasps> is saying, I can't do that yet. What? Stacy, what? I love it when Stacy gets excited. I love, this, is, this is like the old <laughs> breaking news. <laughs> Stacy <Stacey> has a noise. <gasps> what? Stacy gasped. We must hear Alexa, now the cause of the gasp. Play Taylor Swift oh, it's on done Rover. It. Are you talking to your dot? Yes. It's not playing it on the right speaker. <gasps> it is. <laughs> that is okay. big. I can't wait Alexa, to go home stop. and do that. That's nice. That's really great. Okay. I'm very excited about it. Sorry, that. you guys. It's, it's, I, I've been waiting for like eight, nine, a year even. So <sighs> Google is once again giving you free, uh, unlimited original quality storage for your photos and even 4K videos. That's nice. They ought to, they showed some pretty impressive image stabilization they have ois and what they call eis uh the eis is uh ca you know camera stabilization video stabilization oh. software technology so on the left the shaky cam is without ois and eis on the right and that's only on this phone not on the old this is on the pixel too yeah it requires yeah. The hardware with ois right i think that they uh, i mean can we can we talk about what google didn't talk about briefly because this yes. is part of that all this camera stuff Clearly, Google has done something on the chip side related to AI and processing that is as good as, if not better, than what the A12 or sorry, A11 Bionics chip that Apple has done. Why do there you say that? Some, because the type of stuff that they're doing and the processing they're doing on the phone is phenomenal. And we're talking both the image recognition the the amount of computational power it takes to stitch together images like that, um, the image stabilization. And when you look at what they talked, they hinted at it briefly with the clip, and we'll talk about that in a second. But I, I don't know why they didn't dig into this because I am insanely curious about what they've done on the silicon side. So, that, sorry, I just, I'm like, why I, didn't they Aren't they, they just about using this? stock uh, Snapdragon chips? Are they doing custom? They are, so... They are using Snapdragon, but I think there's definitely some sort of either uh, co-processor, not a co-processor, it would be its something own. Something else going on. Yes. I think there's got to be something else going on. Right. So this is my this is my bet. I look at all of this, like that image stabilization, and I'm like, Qualcomm has some lovely image stabilization for drones. So I know they've got it, but this- They're but doing something. When you take it to the- when you take it to the clip form factor, the, there's something. But this on. is where Google's going to win. In the if it, it, unless some of these other companies really get it together, they have more data than anybody else. They are all in on artificial intelligence and machine learning. 
in the face of people saying, oh, gosh, you know, this is Skynet or we don't want Google to know all this stuff, they're, they're not slowing down. They're saying, nope, this is our special sauce. Apple's saying, no, your privacy is more important. We're going to do everything on the phone we can. We don't, so Siri is never going to compete. Amazon that's has a Apple's lot of not data. The, not in the ad business. Right. That, that's why. Uh, Amazon has a lot of data there in the retail business, but their data doesn't really, I think, become as useful as Google's data. They don't read your email, for instance. Facebook well, knows a lot about your connections, but doesn't read your email, doesn't know a lot about what you're doing in other respects. Google respects. stopped reading your email. No, That's, they stopped uh, reading it for the purposes of advertising. Right. Okay, so here's, Did they here's stop something it entirely? to think about. I don't know. I, Google I don't reads your that, freaking but, email, all right? If anything I, that has anti-spam filtering is reading your email, the question uh, is... Well, they're looking for keywords. That's The different question thing. is what they do with what they see. Oh, but you're right. Google will keep reading, reading your, your emails, email. Just not for ads. Variety did a lovely right. story. But what I was going to say is Google has shifted. Like I've... And these are not people talking to me on the record, but I've run into several Google product managers at various events, and their focus is on using your data to give you better products. Um, yes, they will sell ads against it, but it's a much more subtle and probably a smarter strategy. So mm -hmm. look at their AI for, you know, the sound in their speakers. Look at yeah, that Google doesn't photos. make them any advertising money. So that's what that's they're doing, product. and right. Well, look at it's Google Translate. In fact, let's look at it right now. This is these are this is the earbuds that come with this, and this this is actually really interesting. So, Apple's AirPods are uh, arguably a big part of the iPhone because there's no headphone jack. You can tap them to use Siri, but this is Google's version of this Bluetooth earbuds or Air, Bluetooth earbuds that have a string. That's just, you know, I think that actually is smart because the AirPods are a little easy to use. You can also loop them over your ear, it looks like, which means it keeps them in your ear. No, you can't. That's the, no. Uh, you put them, you you loop put them, them inside in there your ear. Oh, so well, that's I'll even better. Never stay in. No, the oh, loop inside your ear is good because that means, no, that's, no, I like that. That actually, because then it goes against that ears. ridge. They're very strange ears. Okay. Well, we'll see. It won't work with anything. I immediately ordered them because I, the thing. I immediately ordered them. The thing that most excites me is the demonstration they did of translation real time. Oh, my God. Gosh, can we can we show that to people? Yeah, because that was that was like magic. It was so great. Um, Sorry, Carson. Okay, maybe we can. Let me also, no, I'm a, Google. Let me just uh, do the Google keynote and uh, watch the Google Two event in 19 minutes. I bet you somewhere this is the Verge's cut down of it. I bet you somewhere in the 19 minutes. We're going to find this translation. There's that lovely thing. lady on stage, the Swedish lady. Yeah, the Swedish. He brings his uh, Swedish the friend. Designer. Here we go. Here we go. So do you have my audio? All right. Uh, but I got to turn it on. It's an incredible application of Google Translate powered by machine learning that's like having a personal translator by your side. Isabel is going to speak Swedish into her Pixel Buds and I'll hear the English translation out of Pixel 2's front speakers. And then I'll respond in English, and she'll hear the Swedish translation in her Pixel buttons. So let's, let hey, me Isabel. make this How's clear going? what's going to go on. Uh, because it isn't immediately obvious uh, the way it sounds on the uh, uh, recording. But she's got earbuds, so she's going to hear what he's saying in Swedish. We won't hear that part. And then when she speaks in Swedish, the, the phone will hear it and translate it into English, which he will hear. But it doesn't. It's not clear to hear the sound. So she's holding a Pixel Two, and she's got the Pixel uh, uh, earbuds in the. Uh, well, I've done this with the phone itself. Yes, and past. you pass it back and forth, kind of. But this isn't yeah. it much more natural. And look how fast it is. Hey Isabel, how are you? Helt okay, tack. Absolutely okay. Thank you. Now it's hard to tell because they're played back through the PA speakers. They screwed this demo up a little bit. They should have played it back for us to hear it but it's coming through her pixel phone when it when it when it comes out in english and note that she has to press the button she touches on the it, side which makes for... sense because it says listen now i'm going to speak i want right. you to translate so this. it doesn't think it's listening to you all the time and yeah. all that let's watch it a little more what do you think of these cool new headphones what do you think of these cool new headphones my team designed them so i think they're very cool 
My team designed them, so I think they're pretty cool. <laughs> so that is that is I love Swedish. as close as you can get to UN style. It's, it's the Babelfish. It's UN style simultaneous translation. It's not quite simultaneous, but it's very, very quick. Enough so that you could have a conversation. Faster, in fact, than the phone translator, I think, by a little bit even. Right? And yes. So I, I want to, I cannot wait to try this out with my daughter who speaks Spanish and I don't because I'm very curious. Like I don't speak Swedish. I have no idea the quality of the translation or kind of because sometimes, you know, Google Translate gets exciting for people. So, but I, I'm still like, I'm so excited about I this. Think this this, is, could this be, is almost magic. It could be magic. It really. Is. I remember way back when at, uh, pardon me for this Davos, when Eric Schmidt uh, demonstr and, and, and Marissa and um, what's his name? We used to be in charge of Android, demonstrated this the first time. And Schmidt said, this will bring world peace. Yeah. If only. That sounds like overstatement, and I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah. But uh, but, it, <laughs> yeah. but it's Donald, a big deal. It translate Donald Trump to Kim Jong-un. It's a, then, then, then okay. Yeah, maybe if it could intercede a little bit and, and, and no, make you it fools, nice. don't do this. Yeah. <laughs> Please don't do that. Uh, Google's <laughs> Pixel Buds are much like the uh, Apple AirPods in that they have a separate case, cloth covered though, to distinguish it from Apple, and the case has its own battery. So the Pixel Buds, just like the AirPods, have five hours of listening time, and the case has another few charges in it. So you, they say twenty-four hours when you include the case. I think that's 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 very good. It is a full uh, Google Assistant. That sounds like a really nice uh, marriage. And since you don't, in fact, have a headphone jack, you kind of need wireless headphones. It will work with other Bluetooth headphones, but that special translation stuff and all that stuff requires a Pixel Two. Is the is the cord? Uh, does it carry charge between the two? No, or? it looks like it's just a, f a physical cord to hold so them does together. It, do you have two Bluetooth connections at once? Does each ear have a Bluetooth connection to the no. phone? I oh, that's an interesting question. That is On an interesting other question. Other ones, and I, I can't remember how Apple does it. One does, and then it sends, and then it talks to the other one through your head. <laughs> well, we'll see. Um, but maybe it does use that cord. It's not clear. It's not clear. You do I, have to. I, the, the, the touch piece is only on the right ear. So, and is that all it does is touch, or are there multiple commands? Or uh, yeah, there's multiple sweep forward or backward for volume control, touch to uh, activate the assistant. I think those are the two they demonstrated. There may be more. My problem know. with that always is because they fall out of my damned ears. I put. I want to push it in, and of course, I, I activate. Yeah. Google Assistant on the Google Pixel Buds is only available on Android and requires an Assistant-enabled Android device and data connection. So I take it back. It does not require a Pixel, but Ooh. it does require a phone that does Google Assistant. So that may be a more limited subset. I'm not sure. That was, I thought, uh, really an exciting part of all this. I think the, the pencil circling things and getting Assistant to respond on the Pixel Book and then this, these buds uh, doing the simultaneous translation were two of the highlights, as far as I was concerned. Then they announced something that was a little weird. <laughs> and, but Stacy's <laughs> going to explain this all to us. Uh, they call it the Google Clips. And this one, people uh, weren't, didn't know what it was. They, they saw the word Google Clips in the, in the something. I can't remember, firmware or whatever. But nobody really knew what it was. It's a standalone wide-angle camera. With 16 gigs of storage, you don't wear it. You put it somewhere, and it decides what to capture. And it gets smarter over time, they say. They're motion stills, so they get seconds of uh, motion on uh, in front and after. There is no audio, and it does not upload it to the cloud until you tell it to for privacy reasons. You see in this picture, the two girls are playing, they're doing Lego, and the on the pillow is the camera sitting on the pillow spying on you. Do something cute, girls. Yeah. Do something I don't know how cute. it knows where to take pictures. Yeah, I know. So this is really, so this is cool slash creepy slash it would be <laughs> awesome if you think about it getting embedded into the devices like the Nest cams. So what it's looking for, uh, it talked about looking for people you care about, right? So yes, it's it recognizing people faces. And pets. Yeah. But it also recognizes like when people stand still 
it recognizes smiles. Uh-huh. Um, so there's a lot happening here that is actually really hard to do. I mean, computer vision and image recognition like this is not insignificant, even if it's only a few models that it's running, like recognizing faces, each face is a model, and then recognizing uh, like when people smile in a dog or cat. Uh, so it's kind of creepy, but, but it's also kind of cool. If you just put this, like if I put this here during the show, and then what happens is you take your phone and you pair you you say okay let me see what you got and you can and it swipe through it and say save that one save that one so it's not saving everything to you, to the cloud unless you say so but imagine if it got ten really interesting shots that's I think that could be really inter really cool but but, but so you got to remember to put it somewhere yeah yes but imagine that on drones. So think about something like wow. that on drones. Yeah. Or just around so the house. I or I like what you said, if it's on the Nest cams. And it just says, yeah, hey, so you had an interesting day. Let me show you some of the things you did. I think there's two things going on with this, which is admittedly kind of a strange device, which may become awesome all on its own. I don't know. But I think there is whatever AI hardware stuff is happening under the hood that Google's not talking to us about. I think that's part of this design, and they did talk about like how to do it in such a small form factor. Um, I think they're spreading that out across as many of devices as possible so it can they can understand how it works, tune the algorithms better, and get the cost down on something like this. So this, this is, is kind a of research. expensive for this what This is, is a research. Yeah, it's 250 bucks. Yeah. Can't buy it today, but you can get on the wait list. But it's more a research project than anything else. They're going to learn from yeah. doing this. 250. And then then it could be somewhere else. That's that's my quote unquote conspiracy theory around clip or the clip or whatever. I clippy. think if they were good, I mean we is there a lot of unknown, but no, I think that's exact I think you nailed it, Stacy. That's of course that's what they're doing. That's what they always nailed do. Nailed it. Nailed it. Sorry. But I think even 250 isn't that much if you think about what you might get out of this, especially if you're a family. And you don't, you know, the worst my kids always hated me because I was always taking pictures. And they would always go, no, don't take pictures. Stop it. Uh, so I never, I didn't get a lot of good pictures. But if you just put this thing unobtrusively and let's let it sit there, and at the end of the evening you looked at what you got, you might get some – It depend, it's really yeah. going to depend on what you get, what the quality is, what the images look like. But if it works as promised, I can see that I can see that's worth 250 Or you get 16 you seconds of the burglar coming oh, yeah, to your well, house. I have to, but see, asking me if I'm going to buy one isn't, isn't demonstrative no. of anything because I have to buy it. <laughs> well, no, I'm going to buy all of this because yeah. I have to talk about it and review it. And if this thing is terrible, I want to get it so that I can tell people, no, 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 really, this doesn't do what anything it's promised. Or on the other hand, <laughs> if it does, I might be able to say, hey, this is, believe it or not, this is something you really want to get. So you know what would be interesting? So think about, like, I'm just thinking about my daughter. And how she uses technology and how she communicates with her friends via silly kind of fun things. And I wonder if I'm a teenage girl or a kid, how this fits in kind of with the Snapchat generation, right? And right. That, that actually might be kind of fun. I mean, I don't. That is very interesting, Stacey. Yeah. So maybe it's like those. I When I was growing up, I had my first camera was like this little pink click that took right. the crappiest pictures ever. Right. But I love that thing. Here's a, here's a happy Google family using their Google clip. It says, be in the moment. That's the point, right? With the mm -hmm. people who matter most. Instead of dad annoying everybody by taking pictures and really not being a part of it, you just put that on the flower bag. <laughs> you leave it there, and then you just do what you do, and then at the oh, end the of it, you see what you get. And if you get, look, you don't have to get a lot. If you've got a few good images that are keepers, that's all you need, right? It does have a button that you can force and it. And how do you know that, you, that you're not cutting off your kid's head? Well, supposedly, it right doesn't angle. It's very it wide knows. angle, and that's why it's very wide angle. That's going to be one of the negatives is it's all the pictures are going to be uh, very wide angle pictures. But, if, I mean, judging by these shots, I think it's Actually, kinda... no. I think, look, they must be doing something to they're compensate zooming for that. In? Oh, I don't know. I, that but, might be. Because these people do it's not moving. look. If you I mean, had I don't a, know a, these people. If you had a 4K but... camera on here, which you might. I mean, the sensors are cheap enough. You're right. I mean, that's a this third picture in with the guy playing basketball with his kid. That's wide angle. They put it on the basketball. I don't know. That's it. Well, see, that's why we have to get one and review it. 
I like if I were a off. civilian, I would wait to read the reviews before I buy it. But I, you know, I'm not. So we need we need 130 degree field of view. That's pretty wide. 15 frames per second. Where's the specs? They don't say what the sensor is. They no, they just, don't. They, it's a fairly slow sensor. It's f two four, f two six, but it's uh, f two four. But uh, they don't say much about it. This is. I think Stacy, you're right. This is a, this is a stealth project. They're trying to get into people's hands so they can learn more about this. But I think you nailed it when you said this could easily be applied to Nest. Oh yeah. yeah. The Nest does that, by the way. The Nest zooms in because it's a 4K sensor on the ins on the new Nest IQ. It zooms. And, so and the can, software that it gives you lets you pick out cute moments. It shows yeah. you what's interesting. Right. So and it no, it learns you people. It learns who's who's who, and will warn you if it sees somebody it hasn't seen before. It has a mm -hmm. lot of this smarts in it. I bet you they're related. <laughs> so that's the clips. They also announced a new a daydream form factor for ninety nine bucks, which is just a little bit improved over the existing daydream. That is a massive, I, massive product dump. That's, that's a lot of product. And, and I, add the Nest stuff last week. Yeah. Go ahead, so please. I have to ask, though, because I I saw their AR stickers demo, and I was stunned that they spent so much freaking time on the AR stickers. So, no, well, am I old? I, I kind of no. wanted to get my daughter to explain this because I'm like. It's dopey. What? It's the same reason Apple spent a similar amount of time on animated emojis using the camera oh, yeah. system and you make funny faces. I think both of these companies, look, you're no older than the people at Google. They're both, they don't, they don't know either. They just notice all these kids using Snapchat filters. And so what can we do? <laughs> I, don't, I think, yeah. I don't think it's that important. I think it's, okay. uh, Florence Ion said this morning when we were covering the stream, and by the way, we do have, if you want to watch the stream, we have a, a Twitch special where Florence and I comment as it goes on during the event this morning. But she said, uh, you know, this is the kind of thing you use once and never use again. Yeah, okay. That's that's how I didn't even want to use it once. Right. So. And it's not but that I'm old. new. We've seen this kind of placing a thing in augmented reality mm -hmm. stuff before. So there you go. Uh, if you include the pencil, it's actually even more new products. One, two, three, four, five. Six. It's a ton. It's a ton of new stuff from uh, Google. Uh, and I think, well, let me, before I say what I think, what do you guys, what do you think, Jeff? What is, is this, uh, what does this, what does this tell us about Google's ambitions? Well, that's a good question. Um, I was hoping you go to Stacy first. Uh, <laughs> I, I think, I, I think you're right about the ecosystem. I think that the, that, that Google recognizes it has to be in the hard, hardware business. It needs to provide an ecosystem. You need to live with assistant. It needs to provide uh, the, you know, assistant across all these platforms. Nobody else is going to build it in for them, build it well. Um, so, uh, you know, and, and, and building the best phone they can and the best laptop they can. I'm personally glad they're still doing that. When we thought the Pixel was dead, the only thing is, when they thought the Pixel was dead, I went on eBay. I could only find one. I bought it. Wow. Uh, because I was so, the, the 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 Chromebook Pixel because I was so uh, addicted to it. Yeah, and I had I had the version one in my office in New York, and it was just too, getting too slow. Um, so I have two Chromebook Pixels because I love it that much. Stacy, <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, Stacy. That's okay. I love but my Stacey, Pixel. People, I love this, my Pixel. Jeff is not alone. The people who love their Pixels love them. I mean, and I know a lot of them, including a lot of Googlers. I love my I love my Pixel. I yeah, so I think it's I think it's a good uh, I think it's an impressive, um, uh, and, and you know here's a question: What's more impressive, today's Google announcement or the Apple announcements of late? Oh, Google for sure, times a thousand. Wow. Okay, that's a that's a big deal. I think. I mean, Leo's, Leo's worrying about the the assassin hits are going to come out <laughs> no, from, I'm from thinking Apple fanboys. About it. I think Apple, you know, if we really thought Apple would going to be all in on augmented reality and there'd be a lot to say about augmented reality on their event, uh, and there wasn't. Mm -hmm. They just didn't mention much at all. It wasn't It wasn't any higher quality what Google did today with a dinosaur, the Stranger Things animal. Uh, I, you know, I don't, I think Apple's a little bit disappointing. Uh, they announced, yeah. they announced yeah. phones and they announced phones that are incrementally better than their existing phones. Even the, uh, like iPhone, this. 
like this, the iPhone 10. They, we know they want an ecosystem. They didn't even talk about at their event. They didn't even talk about their home pod. So they missed out what the biggest architectural shift is in computing today, which is computing is about context. It's about an ecosystem of things that are helping you get stuff done. And a phone that is incrementally better is not the vision forward. The vision forward is things like, hey, when my Pixel Chromebook gets next to my whatever Pixel phone, it automatically tethers. And Apple's done a little bit of that in the past. But things like Siri, like when they announced their stuff, I wanted Siri to be so much better. I was waiting for that. And until Siri is good, the HomePod is going to suck. And I look at what Google's done. They've done a very, I mean, I was, Kevin and I were joking. We were talking about like every time someone says machine learning, drink. But they really have done a good job integrating the computational power that the these all of these things now have access to in really creating a really compelling product in a new vision for how we're going to use devices. And I think that's that's super impressive. This is the future. And it feels like Apple is kind of like not with it. I don't know. I would say I agree with you, but I what I the way I would phrase it is Apple has intentionally chosen to value user privacy over gathering the data necessary for machine learning. Well, but wait, and as see, a again, result, they're again, inevitable. I would argue that's well, because they're not in the ad business. It's, a, it's, not a, it's not an altruistic act. It's just that, that, that they're turning a bug into a feature in their business model. Uh, but, yeah, but I think it's that they sh they're doubling down on it um, because... There is a large segment, maybe growing, maybe even majority segment of people who are concerned about Google. We didn't, we won't get to talk about it today because we're running out of time. But uh, I really wanted to, and we'll do it next week. Talk about we spent some time on Sunday talking about it. About uh, the professor who wrote that Silicon Valley is uh, is has has lost its shine and get ready because governments are about to super regulate companies like Google because of these privacy concerns. That that you know what I'm talking about, Gallows piece. Oh yeah, oh yeah. 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 And I, I I this is if if it weren't for this big Google event, we would have spent the last hour and a half talking about that. But yes. next week, and we'll actually have a triangulation with him on uh, the twentieth. How exciting! So uh, <laughs> Professor Gallows will be on. Uh, is his name Gallows or am I something like that? Galloway. Galloway. <laughs> Okay, I accidentally turned it into a hangman. Professor Gallup, but he is kind of saying, uh, get ready because the hangman's noose is coming for you, Silicon Valley. Um, so yeah. we'll, we'll hear from him on triangulation. And I, I wrote a piece too that I put up, I mean, we'll talk about it next week. Yes. But but arguing that, 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 that they, they have to go out of their way to be virtuous and they're not there. Right. Uh, I think it's quite the opposite. I think Google has decided to double down. Uh, that they're Can I just say they're gonna look at Apple's doing privacy. They're all in on privacy. Great news for us. We can win now. And yes, mm -hmm. sorry, someone stuck a thing on here. It was Ron Amadio, who's smart and lovely. From ours, his Tech, review of the Pixel yes. Two and Two XL. One's nice, one's not. And so I bought the two. I'll be honest, because I have tiny hands, and they're not tiny. Which I one like did he phones. think was nice, nice or not? He thought the 2XL was nicer because of the bezel, um, uh, but the they're curved the same, corners. As Google put, put was great pains to point out, the same internals. It's, it's which yeah, one did you buy, he Leo? says The big one, of course. Okay. He basically says it's uglier. But I don't know what a chamfered edge is. So I kind of feel like this is a very gadget-oriented. Uh, really. Well, and also remember, this is Ron based on what he experienced for 15 minutes this morning. This is not oh, a yeah. review. This is a hands-on. Right, right. But so, Ron's, I mean, Ron's a good dude. And oh, I love he, Ron. He knows his stuff. So. No, 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 I love Ron. <laughs> uh, but I don't, I, this is not a review. This is just here. Here's what I experienced when I held it. So the hardware is exactly the same. And it, it maybe there is a look and feel that's, I kind of agree with him. I, I think The hardware is not the same. What's not like, uh, well the internals? I oh, like the, oh, sorry. Okay, the I'm processor, like, no, the camera, the camera, <laughs> the screens are different. One's LCD, one's PO LED, but the yes. the internals are the same. So you're not getting a slower phone. Google pointed that out. You're yes. just getting a different phone. 
And I, I mean, I, that's just purely subjective, which one looks better to you. I, I think that's subjective. I don't think that that's a, it, it's going to function the same. It's going to have the same speed, the same smarts, the same photography skills. It's just whether you like uh, big ears or not on your screen. And we've, you know, all of us, we've had sure. phones that looked like this all our lives until now. This is only now that we're getting bezel-less phones. I kind of agree with him that I prefer a bezel-less phone, but not. But I think if you want a smaller phone, Stacy, you're not going to be unhappy. I will not be unhappy. No, I don't I think that's a problem. This, he no says, one will let you be he unhappy. says the bezels are massive and awkward, but no, they're exactly the same as the bezels on the current. Look at the current. Show it over my shoulder. The current iPhone eight and the current Pixel XL. When did this suddenly become, you know, unacceptable? This is this is what we. Uh, why can I get my screen turned on here? This is what we've been living with all this time i am highly fashionable so maybe i'll care about bezels i don't know um no i do think that in a couple of years having big ears on a screen will look kind of silly but by the way i should point out one of the negatives to me on this new pixel book is while we're seeing many laptops with virtually no bezel on the screen these the pixel book has big big bezels on the on the isn't laptop. that because it wrapped its, its antenna around Maybe I don't know what it, I don't know what the argument is for it, but it it is I don't think it's I don't think it's if you look at this compared to most modern laptops, I don't think it's yeah. particularly attractive. Frankly, look at the size of the My. bezels on this. This looks like what an old bezels. You have <laughs> this looks like an old fashioned laptop with those bezels. So, but that's a purely subjective, uh, you know, a design or a taste thing. Mm -hmm. I don't think that that I don't think you would be unhappy with the Pixel XL. It, it looks very much like my present. Yeah. yeah, I mean, my my current, you know, choice of laptops, or Windows laptops, most of them have much thinner bezels than this, but that's fine. Good. Well, I will read uh, his uh, hands on, but I, I don't think that's a cause to uh, to uh, for concern if you've already ordered the little one. We didn't talk oh, about. I'm uh, not concerned. Yeah, we didn't talk about Google Lens. They've been showing this since Google Goggles. I was just going to ask about that. Yeah. <laughs> um. The demos looked good, but until we have it, you can't really say much about it. I, All right, uh, Jeff needs to go. I think we got to take a break and get your final uh, picks of the week. Is she? And in just a moment. But first, a word from our sponsors, Captera. <laughs> People call me all the time on the radio show and say, I have a business and I need some software for my yoga studio or my dental practice or uh, my contractor's business. And I say, I don't know what you should. And, you know, most of the time people will just Google this. You know, what's the best contractor software? I got a better idea. Go to Capterra, C-A-P-T-E-R-R-A dot com slash twig. Capterra lets you find the business software you need, hundreds of thousands of programs, in 400 categories with the reviews, with the information you need to make a smart choice. What are you looking for? Alumni management software, audit software, augmented reality software, barcoding software, bug tracking software, call center software, catering. Let's do catering. Catering software. I have a catering business. I need some software. Do you have some choices? 57 results. Cateries, total party planning, gather, better cater. This is kind of one of the things that's kind of kept Terra open my eyes to how much vertical business software there is. But that maybe is a little bit overwhelming. So what if we say, well, I only want to see four stars and up. And let's have it be web-based. I would love it if it would allow me to manage events, facilities, inventory, and customers. How about that? Now we'll filter the results. And, well, we got it down to four products. Let's add to compare add to compare add to compare add to compare monkey software i like that and now i can take these products and i can look at a chart created just for me on captera.com slash twig that says who uses this software what's the target customer size how much it costs is there a free trial what platforms it runs on what it can do and then you get the reviews reviews from real users hundreds of thousands of reviews from real users. They're very careful to vet these. So you're going to get the information you need to make exactly the right choice on the business software you need. And best of all, it's absolutely free. There's no sign up, no salesman will call. You won't get emails from Captera. 
this is a software solution for every business need and it costs you absolutely nothing. And my question to you is, why are you Googling it? Why are you calling the tech guy? Just go to capterra.com slash twig and find the right business software for free. 200,000 reviews by actual users vetted. I love that. capterra.com slash twig. Three million people use it every month. That's a that's a great service they provide. Well, I wish we had some more time. There's so much more to talk about. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's not your fault. No, 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 no. This no, is, Jeff, I'm getting hungry. You're yeah, fine. It's a, it's a, we've already hit an hour and 43 <laughs> minutes. This is not a short show by any means. Uh, but there are so many things I wanted to talk about. The, the fake news that surfaced on both Google and Facebook's safety yeah. check yep. page after the horrific uh, Vegas shootings. That's a problem. Um, yep. Yep. I, I know you have some things to say. Uh, about journalism, um, in particular, uh, uh, what was it that I, I saw? Oh, I, oh, Jeff's going to want to talk about this. Well, I can't remember, but guess what? We get together every week so we can talk about it, and we will. And I'll be coming on from Berlin next week. Oh, what are you doing in Berlin? Speaking at a at a newspaper digital conference. Oh, Facebook's revealing that there are some of the Russian ads now. Is this enough? I want to see uh, those yeah, ads. I, I wrote a piece arguing uh, that they need to do more. Uh, that's what I'd say. Uh, Wither News. Moral authority is a platform, writes Jeff. We shall, uh, we shall read more about it and then talk, discuss for next week. Jeff, you got a number for us this week? Yes, I do. Uh, so uh, Google has now also announced a uh, uh, Street View Ready program. And there's a camera now for $3,500. You can make your own Street View and you can contribute images to Google Street View. Why would I? I'm not 100% why that. you do that. Yeah. Actually, you could make a business out of it, couldn't you? Uh, well, they're not paying you for it. I guess what no, you no, could no, do. No, no, no. You go. Because remember when we, we had a Street View, an internal Street View done of our business? This is auto ready. Hmm. This is, you put it That's in your car. It's you got it a mount in. I don't know what the business would car. be for that. Maybe you could map a campus. Google's going to have loners. Hmm. Uh, yeah, so it's it's fairly weird. It's a 360-degree 8K camera, the Insta360. And uh, you That's load it up it to Street View. It's for parks. It's for private, and you know, private places that Google can't get into. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I guess so. Wow. I mean, it was just it was a little odd. Um, I thought it was kind of freaky because... I hate the idea of like getting caught. I mean, I hate People the idea of getting it. caught on a street view camera, right. but like this will increase the number of the, the creep velocity view. of it's the new creep view feature. Yeah. Creep view, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah, because you don't like have it. to mark a car up or anything. You just surreptitiously drive around like right. that. Right. Right. Hmm. Put it on top of a van, you won't even see it. What if they sold that to law enforcement, to police departments, would you or governments? Yeah, well that is that is a real concern about when we put cameras on city buses or anything yeah. else mm. how do we how do we govern that data use mm. okay the, the number is 3500 well, it's a number it's a number it's a number no it's a good number. It is a number what does it mean stacy higginbotham your pick of the week i have a thing to show you this isn't exactly a pick as many of my things are not picks they're just things this is the August Smart Lock. This is the new base model. So this is the cheapest August that you can buy for, I think it's $149. It's Bluetooth enabled and Nest enabled, but it doesn't, you'd have to spend the additional, I think it's 79 bucks for the, the bridge if you want it not to work with Bluetooth or if you want it to work over Wi-Fi and have like Madam A or whatever on it. But as locks go, this is actually really impressive. It is very sturdy hardware. It looks like um, it. it is like this lock weighs at least a pound. I mean, it is kind of ridiculous. I'll be honest. <laughs> so it also comes. I don't. I didn't see the door sense sensor in here. Oh nope, it's in there. So it comes with their new. They launched something called Door Sense. So if your door is kind of ajar but the lock is closed, it no longer will say, "Hey, your door is locked." It'll say, "Your door is ajar." Um, so I just wanted to show y'all because it's hefty. It's a new form factor for the August and 
that's kind of that. The other one is on my door, so it's working. Um, so yeah, that's that's what this is. The back looks like this. What you do is you'll take your deadbolt out, just the deadbolt part. Um, you leave the locking mechanism. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you leave the lock locking mechanism in. You stick this on the thing you remove from the front. So the back, your key lock stays the same. You stick that on, and then what you'll do is these have little wings, and you'll just mount it on. It takes like possibly not even 10 minutes really to install. So I I prefer to install my entire lock, to swap out my entire lock, but people do like this and it's it's the most popular, I think, smart home lock out there or something. I don't know. I'm going to have to take a so, look at it because I've been resistant to the idea of automated locks, but you're right. They could just break the door down. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm not, I mean, if you want to hack my door. Right. Be easier just no to kick it in. <laughs> it would it would honestly my door has a window next to it. Yeah, you could just break faster. the window and yeah. No, that's a good un- point. A lock's oh, just oh, a suggesting. I'm, I'm also this is this is not really a thing, but this is a thing because I bought it for eight bucks. Your pride cheaper if you don't wrist towels. If you don't want your it, also there's a sweatband, but I did not wear that because that that's hot. But I bought it to cover my Fitbit for two things. Ah. One in the middle of the night, it glows whenever I move. It thinks I need to see the time and it, my husband gets cranky about it. <laughs> yes. So it puts it up. But it also, I, I've done kettlebells for a while now and it protects your your Apple Watch or your kettlebell or from any sort of, like if you're working out with something that's going to hit your watch because a friend of mine cracked her Fitbit oh, doing that. I thought you were in a bell choir. <laughs> well, I guess if you were doing handbells, this that is, actually is, is true. This is the equivalent of Russian... Bell, bell, bell ringing. Yeah. Anyway, I just throwing that out there for you guys because I never even really thought about them. But then I was like, "Hot damn!" And hot you, and you look this like awesome. you, you're a a gay tennis pro. Basically, yes. Yes. Yeah. I'm okay with that. You wear those to bed? I no, I just wear one over my Fitbit. <laughs> oh, that's super better. comfortable. <laughs> and sporty too. <laughs> <laughs> They're rain, rainbow that's uh, very geeky. towels. That's extremely geeky. That's a good point. If you're going to wear a, a, a sleep tracker to bed, you probably should cover it up so that it doesn't wake up your spouse. It's an excellent point. Uh, I don't, I've been on vacation. I'm groggy. I have nothing to say. I have nothing to pick <laughs> except jet lag. You two. I pick you guys. I'll tell you, I'll pick our Twit Live special 326. If you didn't see the Google event, Florence Ion and I talked all about it this morning, and it's available at twit.tv slash specials or wherever you get your podcasts. Highly recommend it. Of course, as long as you're subscribing to shows, you might want to subscribe to this. This week in Google, we do it every Wednesday, 1.30 Pacific, 4.30 Eastern, 2030 UTC, right here at twit.tv slash live. You can join us at the chat room at irc.twit.tv and uh, subscribe if you want and get the on-demand version automatically. It's almost as good as Stranger Things. It certainly is strange. Stacey Higginbotham does a podcast of her own with the wonderful Kevin Toast Toast. <laughs> Toaster? Toasted. <laughs> Kevin Toastal. He, he is not toasted when he does the podcast. I can guarantee that. <laughs> Kevin Toefal. It's uh, IOTpodcast.com. And Stacy's newsletter is uh, Stacy on IOT.com. And don't forget her on Twitter, Giga Stacy, S T A C E Y. You'll find Mr. Jeff Jarvis at buzzmachine.com. He also writes frequently at Medium. His books, What Would Google Do? Public Parts. Geek Sparing Gifts, all about reinventing news. And Gutenberg the Geek are available on Amazon and everywhere finer books are. He's at Jeff Jarvis on the Twitter. Thank you, Jeff. Thank, Thank you, you. Stacy. Welcome back. It's good to be back. I missed you guys. Thanks missed you. to all of you for joining us. We'll see you next time on This Week in Google. <laughs>